How's it going guys? Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Today's video, we're gonna be doing a review over the Cartoon Mobiler plugin by Plugin Everything. You can find this plugin over at aescripts.com. And before we start this video, I just wanna say that I am sponsored by Plugin Everything to do a review over their plugin. But like always, these opinions are my own. And if this plugin sucks, I'll definitely let you guys know. So basically, Cartoon Mobiler is a plugin that allows you to create these nice kind of motion blur cartoon 2D trails here. Um, very, very popular back in the day. A lot of people use the echo effect to create something like this. Um, but the problem with echo is that it's very slow and it's very inconvenient to see as I'll show you guys in a second. So this is the classical case of Cartoon Mobiler. You can pretty much create this any a lot of ways here. Um, but there are some more clever ways to use a plugin. For example, these nice kind of transitions right here. Um, you, can, you can use it to shape layers, but it can be very, very easy to do uh, using the Mobiler plugin here. Same with these nice 2D logo indents right here. Um, you know, you can, you can animate shape layers this way, but just by creating four little circles and just kind of animating it using the Mobiler effect is very, very easy. And I think these are some clever ways on how to use the plugin other than the basic, you know, text blur effect right here. So this is plugin everything. And this is also version 1.5 here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to show you guys the echo effect because it kind of does somewhat the same thing, but it's a little bit more inconvenient. So I'll go ahead and apply the time echo effect. And right off the bat, it changed the color of my text because it's set to add. We'll set it to composite in the back. And so now we're going to go ahead and, you know, decrease uh, the, the, the time offset here. So you can kind of see the echo effect going on, but we need to make more copies of it. So you can kind of see the trails going on here. You kind of get these edges. So you kind of need to play around with the echo time as well as the number of echoes. You can't really see the front face here. You can't really change the color of the actual echo effect without changing the color of the source. Uh, we can change the starting intensity down a little bit to kind of get what we're looking for here, but that's not quite working. We also have the decay option to kind of fine tune the intensity here, but still not quite what we're looking for here. And if we create enough copies and maybe play around with this, so we get these nice smooth edges. Um, it can be kind of tricky to get that look that we're going for here. And maybe we need to duplicate this and we'll go and add maybe a generate fill and um, delete the echo effect here. And this is our front face and we'll change it to kind of like this nice orange white color here. And so we have something like this and I'll just do a quick RAM preview. And you know, it's kind of fast, but it can be notoriously slow when you have a lot of sources going on and it's not really getting the look that we're going for here. And there are some limitations to this. so. Let's go ahead and show you Cartoon Mobler. I don't want to give you guys a full tutorial over it, but I do want to walk over some of the controls with you guys so you guys are aware of what it has. It's a pretty simple plugin. Um, so here we have Cartoon Mobler. You can see that we have um, options to change the gradient, the, the fill. Um, we have more controls over the quality here. So basically we have options like, um, let's go ahead and just go ahead and duplicate this and we'll restart this from scratch. I'll go ahead and turn this off and we'll reset the plugin. And so by the by default, we have somewhat of a trail. The first option is the motion threshold. This is the sensitivity of motion until it generates motion blur. So basically right now it's set to one pixel. So anything that moves by one pixel will actually be generating a motion blur. If we set it to zero, everything will generate a motion blur despite um, it moving or not. And if we set it to 20, it has to move 20 pixels in order for it to generate a motion blur. So this is the sensitivity of it. And time threshold is basically how many steps or how often or frequent that it kind of checks and samples the motion of your, your, your uh, text layer here or your layer of choice. So basically if you're creating a lot of curvature animations or busy animations or complex animations that move around rapidly a lot, you will probably need to decrease this so that it will sample your image more often. So like five or whatever. And so that will sample your motion more, more frequently to generate more accurate trails. Otherwise the trails will be kind of off centered or kind of choppy. Um, but if you're creating more linear animations, um, something like 20 or 40 or even hundred will probably do because it's easy to estimate 
uh, the, the trail, the, the path of your object here. And then we have the shutter angle, very similar to motion blur and, and the composition settings here. Um, so 360 per frame. If you want to uh, add more, more trails, we can just multiply this by like four or five or whatever. So we can add maybe a 720 to this. And as you can see, it kind of creates these nice trails. We don't really have to worry about the number of copies per se or anything like that. So if we want to increase more trails, um, all you got to do is change the shutter angle. We also have the option to enable fill so we can actually separate the trails um, individually with, se with separate colors here. We can increase the shutter angle a bit more, so just say times 10. And that will create nice long trails. We can generate a fill or we can generate our ramp here. As you can see, pretty cool stuff. It's, it renders really fast considering we have just a, a high shutter angle here. And then um, depending on, so these scale and rotation, um, it, it basically uses the anchor point and sometimes it may not be as sensitive as the position value. So you can actually, these are actually multipliers for the motion threshold. So basically, um, if you're doing complex rotation and scale animations, you may want to tone this down or increase the multiplier sensitivity for the motion threshold. Um, if you're not getting the kind of rotation and the scale kind of motion blur that you're looking for here um, under utility here, I don't usually touch those. Um, you also have an option to generate trails based on the motion source. And this is helpful for applying motion blur to adjustment layers and using a different object as the motion source. And I'll show you an example of this a little bit later, but this is pretty much all the controls of cartoon motion blur or mobler. Um, so let's go ahead and do a more complicated test here. So this is an animation I did really quickly using expressions. And basically it uses character animation. So it's not true 3D text per se. It's basically 2D text using the 3D uh, per animation, 3D uh, properties here. So this is what the text looks like by default here. I'm gonna do a quick RAM preview. So it's basically this kind of simple animation here. And if you apply Cartoon Mobile, or this is a pretty cool use of it. You can actually kind of create these nice 3D text here. So it's taking a while because a lot of expressions. You can actually, uh, for a creative use, you can actually create some of these nice 3D texts. So you're not really using it so much for trails as you are for kind of like the nice old school pseudo uh, extrusion here. So as you can see, like something like this it looks pretty nice. And as you can see, we have this kind of nice bouncy 3D extruded kind of text going on using the Mobler uh, plugin here. Pretty cool stuff. Now there are some problems with this plugin. Now, although it's very, very fast and you have a lot of controls to control it, uh, let me show you what happens whenever I, whenever I extend this animation here. And as you can see, the extrusion kind of stops right around here. And that is because um, Cartoon Motion Blur or Cartoon Mo Blur actually doesn't necessarily react to 3D character animations um, using the animate text option here. So basically, I'm getting the extrusion because I have keyframes for the Z position here. So if I go to hit P on the keyboard, basically it senses that I'm actually animating my position values in Z space. And then once it hits this keyframe here, it stops because technically the text is not physically moving in position because it's controlled by the, I guess the fake pseudo 2D or 3D per character animation here. So um, that is one of the, big problems that I have with Cartoon Mobler. It's not necessarily um, its fault, it's by how it's designed. Basically, Cartoon Mobler reacts like actual native motion blur in After Effects. So things have to be moving um, in the transformation properties, position, scale, rotation, um, orientation, like those things have to be animated in order for you to see any sort of trail um, whereas I keep on thinking that, you know, it's kind of like, I keep on using it as if it was more of like a CC force motion blur or a real smart motion blur where it's kind of like this forced motion blur, anything that moves, it kind of, you know, um, interpolates the motion and then generates trails. So because the 2d animation here or the, the text animation character animation, isn't physically moving the position of the text layer, you're not going to see any trails. So one thing I wanna show you guys is the parenting system of Cartoon Mobler. I have these two circles here and they both have the Cartoon Mobler effect applied to them. And so they should be applying motion blur whenever I move them. So if I create a null object and I parent 
these two balls to the null object and I animate the null object, technically there should be some motion blur because everything's parented to the null and these balls have mo blur applied to them. But as you can see, there's no motion blur, even though these spheres are technically moving parented to the null. And that's because um, you have to specify the motion source in this case because the actual the actual um, circles are not technically moving. Their positions are actually not moving. It's the null that's moving. And so we have to specify the motion source to the null in order to, I guess, apply the transformation of the null to the motion blur of the circles here. And that's kind of an annoyance, but that's apparently gonna be fixed in version 2.0. They're gonna remove that. So things should work automatically uh, via parenting. Um, so if things are not moving itself, then you need to specify the motion source, even for parented objects in version 1.5 or below. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, there's also a weird anomaly that I kind of experienced here. I'm not, I'm not sure if it depends on because of my, my animation or if it's because of the plugin, but basically I have this, this kind of spinning, uh, ball animation here in 3d space. I do kind of get this weird gap sometimes right here, but you know, you wouldn't think it'd be a problem here. Um, I guess it's an, it's an interpolation issue, but if I go ahead and turn on the cartoon mobler you're gonna see that there's this weird gap in the center here. I'm not really sure why there's a gap there. And if we kind of zoom in, you know, I don't really know what's going on. Might be an interpolation issue, but um, you know, just something to keep in mind here. Um, something that I've experienced. So let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, setup right here. This is kind of like a physics simulation using Newton. And I'm gonna do this quick RAM preview. And we have about 16 or so um, little little shapes here um, with uh, some physics simulations and they all have a uh, cartoon mobler applied to it um, at pretty cons at pretty excess settings here, a lot of steps and stuff like that. Um, and as you can see, it renders fairly fast. If you were to use the echo effect for this, it would take literally forever. Um, but as you can see, I'm running at full resolution and it is rendering everything pretty fast and pretty seamlessly. Uh, nothing to complain about here. Um, and the cool thing about this is that if you change it to in, um, to half res or quarter res, the actual plugin will actually accommodate the steps accordingly. Um, so if you in, so so if your steps are at you know twenty or whatever, you set it to half, it's going to set it to forty steps and stuff like that. So it's a pretty cool adaptive plugin here to react to the quality. And as you can see, you know, fairly quickly, you can actually render something like this. Um, 16 layers with 16 instances of cartoon mobler applied and it renders fairly quickly without any hiccups um, with a nice shutter angle here. And, you know, it renders pretty fast. Um, so, you know, that's pretty much it for this plugin. It's a very simple plugin. There's, there's very simple controls, nothing too crazy going on in this plugin, but it works fairly well. And for its purpose and its use, of creating trails is very, very simple. Basically, you just slap it on, you adjust you know, three parameters or so once, and you have the desired looks that you want, and you have the fill options. Uh, version two will include a lot of new features that I've been told of, and it's coming pretty soon, so can't wait for that. Um, but again, this beats, uh, for sure, beats the echo effect, hands down, in terms of speed and flexibility and simplicity. And it's also a lot simpler to do than creating, you know, a particle system like particular to create motion trails and stuff like that. And it saves time duplicating layers. Um, so, you know, overall, I think this is a very fantastic plugin. It's not going to hurt your wallet at all. It's $30, I believe, at normal price right now. And I think it's a very, very cool effect if you are creating a lot of 2D style animation, logo animation, simple stuff like that. So I think it's a very nice replacement for the echo effect. So if you find yourself using the echo effect a lot, you you find yourself using a lot of trails, um, this plugin may save you some time and save you some headache in the process. So this is basically a cartoon mobler by plugin everything. My name is Vince Wynn from thecreativedojo.net. Hope you guys like this review and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.